All right, welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over three different uh, ways of making a timer. Um, and we'll start with uh, the most uh, common way, and then we'll kind of look at how to make a timer purely in code. And then we'll look at how to make like a quick and dirty timer if you just need something fast uh, for a specific line of code. Um, so timers are obviously very useful. You can use them for all different things. Let's say you have a special attack uh, and you only want it to occur once once in a while um, that it's available you might have a boolean flag and how do you tell that flag when to go into its true state um, you're going to need a timer to sort of keep track and then and then flip that boolean flag um, you might need them for coyote jump timers you know as if you start to fall off a ledge and you're ready to jump um, you might want a little timer that that um, starts ticking as soon as you start to fall off um, that allows you to jump before it um, before it resets. Um, so all of those are um, various uses. Um, just for the sake of example, I'm going to keep it simple um, and just walk you through this project and we're going to solve a problem that, that I have. So basically what I want to do is in this project, so I've got my um, little setup and I want to you know, kill this guy and I want him to play a death sound. But the problem is as soon as he dies, um, the sound isn't playing. Uh, and how can we use a timer to sort of fix this? So just to walk you through the project a little bit um, that I've already set up, I've got a world um, and I've got a player and the player has a hurt box on him. And if you want to look just quickly through the hurt box, um, the hurt box is on layer two, um, which I've labeled hurt box. And, it's, um, and then the enemy here has a hit box and that hit box is going to be looking for that hurt box on, um, on layer two. And every time, uh, the player enters the hitbox area and that signal is detected, which I've already wired up and I do have a video on signals if um, if that part's a mystery to you. It subtracts um, a hit point every time that um, sword area enters the um, enemy's hitbox area. Um, I also have a setter getter. I have another little tutorial on that if um, that's something that you want to learn. Um, and I'll link to it. But uh, if you can, if you see here, I, here's my hit points variable, and I have a setter on it. That anytime the value changes, um, it obviously uh, resets the value. Um, it'll print out how many hit points are left, and then if it goes less than or equal to zero, we're going to call this function die. And what this function die does is it's going to play this sound, um, and then it's going to free the object so that you know we don't. Uh, run out of memory or, or anything. Um, the problem, as I'm sure most of you are aware, what's happening is the audio stream player starts to play and then it's immediately destroyed. So we need some way of pausing that. Now there's a really easy solution, I'll show you that at the end of how to sort of solve this, this particular problem, but just for the sake of example, um, we're going to be using a timer um, to add a delay. So how do we do that? So the, obviously the most common way and probably the easiest way of adding a timer is to simply uh, add a timer. So I'm gonna hit Control A here on my enemy and I'm gonna add a timer. And now I've got a timer. And that timer um, has a signal on it. And that signal is, uh, if we come here, that signal is timeout. And I can double click here and I can connect that timeout signal. Uh, and I'm gonna connect it to the enemy's script and it'll just be on timer timeout. And I kind of prefer doing my signals like this so they don't get too lengthy, but that's uh, that's whatever you want. Delete that code so I don't get any cheats. Um, and now we have this timer connected to uh, the timeout signal. And when it times out, we are going to queue free. Now, um, obviously you can see that I need to do something with this timer. And, and what can I do with this timer? Well, let's, we have to get access to it. So come over here, drag out my timer. And then of course I just drag out, hit, hold down control and then let it go. Um, and now what we can do with this timer is we can look at its uh, functions. All right, so let's see, Oop. and here's its property. So let's say, let's delay, you know, maybe one second just to start out with. Um, and then there's these two properties. One is called auto start, and auto start means as soon as the scene tree starts going, um, it'll it'll start playing. 
Um, and that's probably maybe not what you always want. Um, one shot just basically means as soon as it stops, that's it. it you, unless you start it again with code, um, it is not going to run again. So uh, I will just show you what happens when we do auto start. If we hit play, after one second, it immediately dies. And that's you know obviously not what we want. So we'll turn off auto start. Um, and we'll come in here uh, and we'll just say, here, we've got our timer. And at the auto stream player, we'll go timer dot start. And you can actually put in a custom time if you want, and I'll show you that. So right now it'll last for one second. But if we hit play, oh, yeah, so I have two, three hit points. Now I have two hit points, so you can see that down here. Here's my little hit point counter. One hit point and I died. But it wasn't long enough. Um, because it lasts for one second, you could probably hear the sound start to play, but it's not long enough. So we can just come here. And even though my timer's at one, I'll just to show you with code, should override it. So let's do timer 10 seconds. And we'll hit play. And I'll stab it a third Is time. Is this the end of Zombie Shakespeare? And so we've played our death sound. Uh, and it's going to sit there for 10 seconds. Um, and then and then get destroyed. So that's one way of creating a timer uh, and starting it with code. And you obviously have to get access to the timer um, and uh, and then start the timer. Um, but let's do another way. So let's actually just create a timer entirely in code. And so I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna get rid of this timer here. And obviously now it has no idea what timer is. So um, we're going to get rid of this function too, and we're going to go back to our original setup, which was Q for. So now we want to just make a timer, and how do we do that? We go here and we type var timer, and we'll make it of type timer. So our autocomplete is helpful, and we'll make a new timer dot new. So we've now made a timer object, but of course there's no parameter set, and I don't believe there's any uh, parameters you can put in the function. But now we've created a timer, um, and we're going to set some parameters. So we'll do timer, and remember we can do come here and do one shot, and oops, one shot equals true, and we can do timer dot auto start, and we can make sure that that's false. Uh, and we can set the timer dot, uh, what is it, uh, duration, timer dot, oh, this is not good, let's see, let's just look at our timer for a second, documentation, and we have the uh, wait time, that's what we want, so let's come back here, enemy and we'll do timer dot wait time and if we set it to say two seconds um, now we can start it but this is not going to be good enough um, so if you see nothing happens um, and even if I Kill this guy, he's going to immediately queue free. So I've created this timer, but remember we need to connect the timer to a signal. And that's that timer timeout signal. So we'll come here and go timer.timeout. And we want to connect it to something. Now I could come back here and I can make a funk. Uh, what, what do we call it? Let's say funk um, timer timeout. And we can do queue free and I can connect this to our timer timeout function now remember when you're connecting signals you don't want the parentheses because that's calling the function um, and so now we've connected it to the signal and now should it work you'd think so but it still just dies right away oh uh, well there's a couple reasons for that but let's do this all right now let's hit play and it should die after two seconds. Is this the so we're playing the sound. 
but the timer.timeout is not being called. And the reason for that is, remember, in Gujo, objects need to be actually be added to the tree for them to start working and start playing. Um, oh, well, also, I didn't start. Oh, no, I did. Um, so we actually need to add this timer to the tree. So once we, um, once we have this timer, we now have to go to um, add child. And now we're going to add the timer node to the tree. And now, hopefully, this thing should work. So let's see. One, two, three. Is this the end? And it works. And here we've set our wait time in code. Um, and we can make it, obviously, like five seconds so that now it'll wait a little bit longer and we'll play the whole sound. Is this the end of zombie? I'm sure you're sick of hearing that, yeah. but here we go. And after five seconds, it dies. So. Um, so this is the this is the way of actually creating a timer. You do have to go through this whole rigmarole in order to um, create a timer straight from code. Just remember, any object needs to get added to the tree for it to actually start to function. All right, so um, that's that. That's this sort of crucial line of code. Now, um, just a few other things we can do uh, just to learn. Um, so, as you can see, we're connecting it to the signal, but. Maybe even even easier way of doing this is to just since we're just going to do a quick function. It's kind of annoying to clutter our code with more functions. So let's. This is the perfect case for a lambda. And to make a lambda, we can make a little function here, and um, we can make a little lambda, and we call it func. Um, but because it's a lambda, we don't need a name. So we're just going to put some parentheses and declare it right here. Um, now, obviously, you can do the full um, the full code here. You can you know add a variable and do the whole thing. But for this one, I just need a single line and I just need it to Q free. And now, um, and now this probably isn't going to work and I'll show you why. Oh. Is this the end of zombie Shakespeare? And there it goes. So in this simple example, we've made a, um, we've connected it to our little Lambda. All right, um, now let's say you just want a quick and easy timer. Uh, that is also simple to do uh, and a lot simpler than this. So we know we want to queue free uh, right after playing this. Um, so, uh, so we can just make a little timer in the scene tree. And you just do that by saying get tree. And when you hit dot, there should be something, and you can actually see it already in the autocomplete called create timer. Um, you can also create a tween really easily the same way, um, but we're going to create a timer, and we're going to set that timer. Uh, and if you you know we pop up the autocomplete, we can just say the timer is five seconds, uh, and then uh, and then we want to. Oh, I actually don't. I don't even think you need to start it. You just create the timer for five seconds, and then it should go. And if we hit play. It dies immediately. Arg. Okay, so what's the problem? So the problem is we've created the timer and it's actually added to the scene tree, um, but it's not really doing anything, right? So we need to um, we need to do something with this. And what we need to do is we need to wait on the signal that the timeout um, that the timer is created. And if we come to timeout, this signal um, will fire once it um, once the timeout uh, signal is hit. What we want to do is we want to wait for it. And how do we do that? We just say await. So we await the timer's timeout signal. And what that'll do is it'll pause execution in this thread um, until this timer timeout signal occurs. Uh, and, then, um, and then it'll move on to the next line of code. So just to prove that to you, we'll hit play. And we'll go one, two, three. Is this the and it's playing. Zombie shakes and it's waiting. And then it queues free. Um, and just to show you that it doesn't block all your threads, here we'll just come here to our scene and we'll duplicate the scene. And now we have two enemies, and I'll just hit Alt and drag this one down so that I have two enemies. And we'll hit play. And you can see, and just look down here for the hit points moving. So even though 
this is awaiting the end of me doing this, the other one is also working. Um, so that that await only um, that await will only block the thread of that specific object. It won't um, it won't bother your other your other things. Um, whereas certain other methods of sleeping or waiting uh, might. So there you go. That's three easy ways of um, making a timer. Uh, and um, and even awaiting the timer. Now, uh, now that we've learned to wait, there's uh, I promised you the easy solution to this. So um, without further ado, let's come to our enemy. Uh, and the easiest way to do this now we know about awaiting signals. So rather than adding a timer, the audio stream player has a um, has a signal on it called finished, and and um, the finish will fire as soon as the sound player is done. So we have our audio stream player that I've gotten, we've got access to it. Um, here's its finish and I'm gonna await it uh, and then cue free and now this should work. Is this the end of zombie Shakespeare? Is this the end of zombie and there it goes, as soon as it finished the sound, which there's a little bit of, um, little bit of extra time on my wave that I made, um, it'll cue free after that. So there you go, I hope this was helpful. Um, just creating timers um, through three different ways, um, and uh, good luck to you all.